Welcome to our second season of Coping with Jesus. This is session three of Stories of Hope. In our first season, we um, talked about Jesus as our model. And Jesus modeled coping with us and hope. In this season, we are focusing on how we can be like Jesus and act like Jesus and bring hope to others. And so that's what our stories will demonstrate and um, um, talk about. And so I have a little um, quote here, a little quote from St. Mother Teresa that I'd like to use as our kind of our guideline for today. And that is that we often feel that we are doing just, that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean, kind of unimportant. But the ocean would be less if that drop was missing. So, with us today, we have our friend Lisa Mann back. Um, thank you for coming back and joining us again and helping us share stories of hope. And we have a brand new guest today. We have Eve Rossi. Thank you. So thank you for being here, Eve. Um, so you're new to our podcast and new to our little uh, group of guests. So would you like to tell us just a little bit about yourself? Okay. My name's Eve Rossi. Um, I'm a resident of Bloomingdale, and I belong to St. Walter's. I've been here probably about 15 years. I have served on the um, bereavement ministry for about 10, and um, I'm an only child. I have no siblings, uh, a lot of time to um, reflect and um, hear the Lord speak to me on how I should give back where I have more time than most people who are married with children and siblings. And so that was one of our conversations last week, and I don't even think you know it was that um, we think sometimes that there's nothing more we can do. And then you hear a story and you're like, maybe I can find a little more time in my life for that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, kind of fed right into last week's conversation. Um, so, Lisa, did you bring us any new stories of hope today? Well, last week I was in Walgreens, um, needed to get my shingles vaccination of all things, and it was it was a little chaotic because they're starting to roll out all the COVID um, vaccinations. So there was there was a lot of flurry of activity back by the pharmacy, and so things got delayed. And it's like, okay, I'm early. There's time and. You know, by the time that was done, I needed to pick up a couple of things and, and just get going. And the cashier up front just didn't look like he was having the best day um, as as I was checking out. So I started talking to him and said, you know, I can I can tell you guys have a lot going on around here. And and he goes, yeah, yeah, we do. And I said, you know, it's amazing what a good job you all still do. I said, given how much is going on, because your upper management expects a lot and they really should be probably providing you guys some more support. He looked so relieved at somebody acknowledging what he does that he just, you could tell he instantly relaxed. And I thought, it wasn't a big thing, but it just, I could, I could just tell. And I thought, you know, what would I want somebody to say to me if I was in his shoes? And that would be what I want. So that's, that's kind of what I try to do, you know, what would Jesus do? And Jesus would, you know, give a word of encouragement. And, you know, we had a really good conversation. We wound up talking for about four minutes because there was nobody in line behind me before I left. And, you know, I left with a smile on my face and he left smiling and to help the next person once they came up. And it, it turned out really well. That is such a gift of yours, um, Lisa. I remember two weeks ago you talked about the um, uh, mail carrier and mm -hmm. you noticed uh, that the mail carrier could use a little conversation, a little mm -hmm. affirmation. Um, so that's really a gift of yours. And I've been watching The Chosen, and, and you're right. You just watch Jesus walk through life, or you think about mm -hmm. how he walked through his life, and he took time to mm -hmm. um, to acknowledge and to recognize people and to give them something that they might need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes his were miracles, but ours could be a little miracle in their day too mm -hmm. you know kind words mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that did you have any um response to that eve um you know 
I have noticed that um, through the pandemic, that my opportunities um, are not always right there in front of me mm -hmm. to do good kindness. And I feel that this has been more of a challenge. God's challenging me to reach out and do the kindness because I'm not out Side, right. you know, I'm putting myself more at home, and um, so it, it's it's more of a challenge to make the effort to make that phone call to see how somebody's doing. Um, it's easy to see somebody's garbage needs to be brought up after the garbage person has picked it up, take the can and bring it up. And people are so grateful, especially the elderly now, because I think of them walking outside and walking down the driveway. And I see some of them at their age shouldn't be out there even using a shovel. You know, you want to go and take the shovel away from them. And but, you, you know, you have to let them you have to do it in the right way. But I did have an act of kindness that I did through the holidays. Um, and I've had a client for so many years um, that came to me every week, let's say over 50 years. She's been with me a long time. And her, parent, and her family was still bringing her into the salon to um, get her hair done. And with this pandemic then, of course, they became quarantined and they weren't able to bring her out anymore. Months had gone by and I felt so bad. I was thinking, wow, is this the way I'm never going to see her again? And so I thought, you know what? I wonder if I could just make this big sign for the holidays, go there, stand outside in front of her window and just say Merry Christmas to her. <laughs> and while I was doing this, because I made quite a huge sign, I ended up putting so much into it. I kept thinking, oh, dear God, I, I hope wherever her window is going to be, she's going to be able to see me. I hope when I get there, they're going to be able to bring her. I was getting all this anxiety, not thinking that. Don't worry about that. Lord has it all under control. He knows that you're going there. He will make it all work perfect. So I even asked a friend who works with me, who knows her, would you like to come with? I <laughs> says, well, we'll make it fun. You know, we'll put Santa Claus hats on and we'll go out there. So not knowing how this was all going to work, we got in the car, we got there. Lo and behold, everything fell so perfectly into place. I, I called there. The um, people that are working there said, oh, yeah, well, we'll bring her in front of her window. They, they described where she was. So by the time I pulled up to her window, they had already had her there. And she was on the third floor. She could see us. The sign was huge saying Merry <laughs> Christmas. So me and the other girl just got right into singing and acting like we were dancing and singing. And, you know, we had the hats on. It just was just a God's moment. She was there with her hands together, like praying and swaying and dancing, just as though she was right there down with us. Mm -hmm. She was smiling. We're waving from the window. She's waving at the window. It's almost like she didn't want us to go, you know? And um, it was just a it was. It was just a wonderful, wonderful experience to see that, you know. And she appreciated it so much. Her family then texted me and said, you know, you've been a part of our family. We love you so much. Thank you for doing that. They were all just so gracious. So, so it's such a beautiful story, and it's so you, you know, to want to be thinking of other people. Um, but it did take effort. Oh, oh yeah. so so you had the idea. I mean, many times I get an idea and I'm like, oh, I really, I really think I'm going to do this. And I think I talked about this with calling my friend that time, a couple <laughs> weeks ago. And then it, it just waits and waits and waits and I never get to it. And by the time I get to it, it, it's dwindled down to something different. But so that took effort. It took a lot of effort. But you also received the rewards. 
Right. You didn't do it for the rewards. Right, absolutely. But not. you received joy. And what a model you were to the other people in that home. The nurses, it's just a nursing home. Well, right? and the nurses actually were taking their cameras out. Yes. And from the room, <laughs> I could see they were taking our pictures as we were dancing yes. around, being really silly. Because they couldn't hear us singing. Because you were modeling so so beautifully to them, you know, um, how they could. I mean, you. Some of them might have been really touched to do to go another step further with their care or with their, you know, maybe making a, a card for one of them or maybe moving the uh, some of the cards that come to the to the mm -hmm. patients, to the to the elderly over closer so they could see them. They just may have made some difference um, with those mm -hmm. nurses. I'm sure you did. But to the little lady, that had yeah, to be wonderful. Either yep. whether she knows it or not, she she really had a fun time she and you did. brought that to I mean, her. I had a fun time. She actually brought joy back to me by watching her, you know. But you trusted that the Lord would take care of it too when you started to get anxious. And right. I think we have to do that. And sometimes we just have to say, um, however you want this to work, I'm really not sure how it's going to work, but I have a plan. I, I want to see this, per you know, sometimes we just have to kind of give it, give it to God. And you did, and it was beautiful memory. That's be and that's really nice, and for her family, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it family. meant it. It truly meant a lot to her family. Mm -hmm. that, you know, I had been there, so that someone else cared for for their mother or for their relative like mm -hmm. that. Don't you think? Yes, these are these are things that um, I would say many people think of, but not that many people go ahead and do them. Mm -hmm people would want to. So the more we can tell these stories and encourage people to, to, to make that difference, to be that little drop in the ocean and, and make a difference, because your little drop might have made a difference to that whole place that day. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I do have a story too today. It's not mine, um, using other people's stories, but um, we uh, have Zoom call with my siblings, and one of my sisters just had a birthday. She received... Um, a gift card, and she went to a store, which I won't name, and um, was going to use her gift card to buy this this rug, this area rug, that her friend said, you have to get it. It's perfect for your house, and it's on sale. So she went there by herself to buy an area rug and realized, how will I ever get this to my car? Oh. And the store could not help her. Oh. So she wanted it anyway. So she said, okay, well, I'm going to do this. So she managed to get it kind of on the car, on a cart and get it up to the register. And when she got to the register, um, the lady wanted her to pick it up. And she's like, well, I, I really don't know if I can get it up there, you know. So she was trying. And behind her, which she, unbeknownst to her, was a lady and her daughter. And um, so this lady... Um, said, let me help you, you know, and she said, oh, thank you so much. So she helped her. They got it up. She bought the rug, and she, as she was um, leaving, the little lady behind her, younger lady behind her, said, um, we're going to bring this to your car for you, and she was like, oh, that's okay. She said, I, I can get it in my car, you know, I'll, she said, you cannot get this in your car. We're going to bring it in your car for you, <laughs> and my sister is just, when she tells the story, it's like, God put an angel behind me because I couldn't get this myself, mm -hmm. and nobody in the store would help me. And, and she, and she, and you know what? The, the beautiful part is she no longer was upset with the people at the store mm -hmm. because the angel took over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and followed her and wouldn't let her go get her car. Walked with her to her car, <laughs> put this in. I, knowing my sister, she probably took their name and address, we'll send them flowers or something, but <laughs> but the fact is that God put this angel, and he does do that, to put these angels in our in our life sometimes, and, and just a random person helped her, plus she modeled to her daughter. I'm really big on that modeling piece. Mm -hmm. She modeled mm -hmm. to her daughter that mm -hmm. this didn't take us long, and look what it meant to, to this lady. So... Um, I don't know. I just think they're they're all around us, you know. <laughs> and I would agree with something you said earlier. It's it's harder because we're all distanced and we're not really going out all that much to find things to do. So 
when I am out, especially if I'm going through a drive through somewhere, like going to get coffee, because there's, there's always somewhere to drive through and get coffee. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for Java. Um, and I remember it was, it was a couple of months back, and I could see this other person in the car, and I want to say it was probably on Monday. They looked a little frenetic. And you, you know that look. You can tell they want to get in line. They got to go. They're probably running late to work and everything. And, and they weren't in the right line, but they were trying to get, I'm like, I'm just waving them through. Come on, come on. And they're like, no, 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 you go. I'm like, no, come on, you go. And when I get up to the door to, to get my order, and I said, okay, you need to scan my, my phone. And, and they're like, no. They paid for your coffee. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Because <laughs> I knew I wasn't fully awake yet. Run that by me again? And they're like, yeah, they, they paid for your coffee. And I said, all right, well, let's just do uh, the, let's pay for the person behind me. So it's like, that's that's how you know how these things start in these mm -hmm. coffee lines. Is you just need one domino to fall. And it's not a guarantee, but it's like, you know, random acts of kindness are free. Right. Right. And there's, and there's always a second, at least a few minutes a week to do something small for somebody. And that's that's the thing I think I've taken away from from my involvement here, especially in the last year, through Alpha and through Lexio Divina. It's you know, when your prayer life deepens, it opens you up for more opportunities. Yes. And you don't need anything giant. It doesn't mean I can I can, you know, bake cakes for 500 people no that that would not be a good thing and that's not a strength but can i can i do something small like you know banana bread for my letter carrier or for for folks here or for my family yeah i can do that mm -hmm. and it's a small thing but you know it, it means something mm -hmm. you know can i pick up the phone and call did i have to schedule yeah can i remind a friend mm -hmm. <laughs> to pick up the phone and call yes you can <laughs> Right. Well, you know what? That's so true. I mean, you know, there are opportunities every single day for us to give of kindness. I mean, how many times have you walked out of a store and there's somebody right behind you and you are you see that, so you hold the door open mm -hmm. for them? Mm -hmm. um, I mean... Sometimes it's just with our own family on some of those days, too. You Maybe you're not going anywhere or doing anything big, but um, you said thank you for something that you usually don't say thank you for. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we used to talk to the uh, after-school care um, children and, and even the kindergarten children about, you can thank your mom for making dinner sometimes, you know, and it really can make her day, you know, make her feel good. Right, just the act of someone else being kind to you mm -hmm. and saying thank you. But I've experienced that so much mm -hmm. at the going for coffee where it's been, I'm, I'm always like stunned the person in front of you paid for your coffee. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, and, and, mm -hmm. and it happens so many times. It's like, and I'm almost sometimes feeling like, okay, I need to pass it forward, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what it is. I mean, it should just keep going. And a lot of times, like you, instead of giving it to the person behind me, I'll give the rest of it to, I'll say to the server, I said, you know what? It's yours. The tip mm -hmm. is all yours. Mm -hmm. and, and they're just like, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a good I mean, one. It's yeah. just, I like that. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're the worker here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're probably I, I don't like say that, you're yeah. probably not making that much. I mean, and you're really struggling, you know, at this time, and you're working twice as hard because mm -hmm. people are in line, yeah. and, and even if they aren't struggling, just that model right. of doing yeah. something kind for exactly. them. Exactly, it's beautiful. You, you know? know, so um, yeah, that that is. That actually makes my day, just to, <laughs> just to see how people are treating other people, you know, that way. And that, I think, is um, really just, as you said, Lisa, focusing more on your faith and on, on the Lord. And, like, if you're focusing on him and thinking about him, what would Jesus do? I'd like to do some, even if you, even if it's not a difficult situation where you have to say, what would Jesus do? It's a situation where I want to do something that Jesus would do today. Let me, let me think. 
Mm -hmm. What can I do? You know, um, I've had missed opportunities, and someone paid for me once, and I was like, I should pay for the person behind me. I don't really know how to do this. I mean, I, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, if it's out of my, I, I don't know exactly what to do here, so I'll just do it another time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that too. Yeah, you, know, you know, I've done that, that too. You know, I mean, it's like, I think the first few times it happens, it's like, okay, what, you know, what do I do? I mean, do I pay for the person behind me? I don't know. Maybe they got a car full of people. Maybe I don't have enough money on me to pay for everybody in the car. Right. You know, yeah, another so. thing that's very difficult for me sometimes is to accept gifts. And uh, I'm one of my principals way back years ago, Sister Therese told me, you don't have to write thank yous for thank yous. You know, but someone gave me a, a gift at Christmas time, just an old student, an old a family that I used to teach their children, and in it was this hundred dollar bill, and I was like, "What do I do? How do I thank them?" What? And I'm like, mm, "I don't have to give thank yous for thank yous," but so you know, I had to think. I had to really work on that. I couldn't get a hold of them by phone. I had to just send a note. It was it was kind of tricky for me, but. Um, we have to learn how to accept and, I mean, say thank you, but be gracious but, for that gift, that angel gift that the Lord was working through someone and you were their, you were their victim, you were their person. Right, and yeah. how many times I've realized too, you know, I'll have a friend that will want to treat me and I'll go, no, 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 you know, I don't want you to have to treat me. And it. It's a gift for them to mm -hmm. treat you. To allow and them. And if you don't allow them to be able to give you that gift, they really want to do that. Right. That's something that's... That, I think, is a do. lesson that a lot of people yeah. need to, to learn. And You don't need to argue over that. You can pay it back another time, but let them have it today. Let them have it. Exactly. You know? and you can decline twice except yeah. the third time. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know what? Take it... Take, take it back to what you think. You want you like giving to people. Mm -hmm. How would you feel if that person said, no, 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 I, I, I don't want you to do that. And you want to mm -hmm. do it because you truly want to do yes. it. So you kind of think about it. Hurts. That. It, almost, it almost hurts to be rejected. Well, it's almost like being rejected. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I, yeah. I, this thing. And I think of Jesus walking along. Would he say no to somebody that, mm -hmm. that wanted to carry his bag, you know, or do something for him? He wouldn't. He'd let them do it. Mm -hmm. you know. So um, great conversations, great stories. Do we have anything else be, um, to say? I mean, I, I just think we had good examples here of, of everyday things that, that we can do. Well, you know what? I, I've experienced things like many times with circumstances, you know, with um, loved ones that sometimes... Um, you might be upset with them. Mm -hmm. And in, instead of attacking them, you know, um, treat it more with love rather than anger mm -hmm. or being upset. And that's been a hard lesson to learn. But the days that I get it, <laughs> It's mm -hmm. like amazing. The words that I speak, mm -hmm. I almost feel as though the Lord is speaking through me. Mm -hmm. And I ask, of course, you know, please, Lord, please, Abba, help me, Father. Mm -hmm. Help me say it in the way, what would Jesus do? How would he say this? How would he deal with it? You know, I mean, he... He would be firm, you know, mm -hmm. but he would be doing it in a loving way, not mm -hmm. in anger or right. attack. And um, those times when those situations, I, I after it's all said and done, it's mm -hmm. left with such peace and love. I agree. And, um, mm -hmm. and much more of an understanding of where the Each other, one of us are the other person from. is, and because we are all beloved children of God, and so mm -hmm. just because I'm very angry at you doesn't mean that I can't be nice to you or treat you, you know, like um, 
like Jesus would, you know, as God's child. Um, mm -hmm. But that's beautiful. Um, a good good thoughts for us to uh, take with us is um, mm -hmm. remember as we're doing kind things for others, it can be right close to you in your family. It can be someone who really upsets you, and it could be just your words because mm -hmm. words can be mm -hmm. such a gift. They can be mm -hmm. uh, the same thing as um, buying somebody's coffee. Come? Kill them with kindness. My mother always used to say, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, yes. don't, don't get angry, don't get upset, don't get mad. Just but we can have. This is a discussion for another day. But we can have anger feelings. But how would what would Jesus do to handle them? And yes. it's so nice of you to bring up that. And Jesus um, knew the power of the pause. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of examples in the Gospels where he didn't start talking. He would wait. And then he might say something, and then he'd stop and let the other side have a chance. And that changes the dynamic, too. And I I think of, of times that that I've missed the bell <laughs> totally with family. And then there are other times where it's like, if I, if I anticipate it's going to be a difficult conversation, whether it's in person or on the phone, I'll say a short prayer and just, okay, I need to address something. Help me be calm. <laughs> <laughs> so the pause that, and in that pause can be the prayer. Mm -hmm. I love the pause that brings on the prayer. Okay, so, um, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for this beautiful conversation um, today. It, we, we, we covered a lot of ground, <laughs> and we, gave, we're, we have a lot to think about as we move forward into the week. And so thank you, Lisa and Eve, um, for sharing and for being with us and for being such um, models of Jesus in your lives, in your stories. And I'm, of course, I'm sure you aren't always. We are not perfect people, but we, we do the best we can. And some of us are, are trying extra hard these days. And uh, Lent coming, that will be helpful too for all of us, right? <laughs> so I'd like to close with just a little um, Thanksgiving prayer. Um, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful conversation, for um, bringing Lisa and Eve um, to our presence and having them share their love for you and love for others. And um, thank you for the, the idea of the pause as we leave um, our time together today. Let's um, pause and remember to pray and remember your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this moment. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for joining us today. I hope you are taking some great ideas with you, and we hope you enjoy your week, and we'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.